Hey everybody, I thought for today's episode that I would just talk a little bit about some of the books that I'm working out of as we head into the summer and what I've been working on through quarantine. Uh, you've already seen me share various transcriptions that I do, uh, so that's definitely one element of what I'm practicing, but I'm also a woodwind doubler, so it's important that I keep up on all my instruments as we head into this sort of open-ended period of not knowing when we're going to be playing again. I don't want to get back and not be able to play clarinet at all, so I've been practicing a lot of my doubles. Uh, which for me is the different clarinets and flute, uh, as well as the different saxophones, including including baritone saxophone, which is pretty new for me. Um, so today I just pulled out a few of the books that I'm working on, because one of the things that's nice about all this time is, is that I can go through certain books from start to finish. Uh, so for clarinet, for example, I decided that I'm going to work through all of the Krepsch books. I've already spent a good amount of time on volume one, and there are four volumes. Uh, that is this. And what's nice about these is that they are basically two to three line little melodies and organized by key, uh, major and minor. So if you feel like uh, working on the key of A flat, you can open up to this two page spread of A flat and just pick two or three, get them up to speed. And that's a good way to start your practice. It's like an etude, but more concentrated because you only have one or two lines. So you can really spend some time working it up technically uh, and one of the hardest things about clarinet as an improviser is getting around in different keys. It's a very clunky uh, fingering mechanism compared to uh, the easy fingerings of the saxophone. The clarinet for me, I feel like a gorilla playing it sometimes. So uh, really spending time on a specific key for a while is great. So I decided to work through that. That's number one. Then I need an etude or something like that. So uh, you saw me share maybe on Instagram. Uh, this Spud Murphy exercise book, and I love books like this. I should do a separate video just on vintage, sort of hard to find uh, method books. But uh, this is a jazz big band arranger, Lyle Spud Murphy. He had a band in the 30s. Uh, but for some reason, he wrote a four or three volume clarinet etude series. And this one I just found at a used bookstore. Uh, same idea. He picks a tonality, G flat, D flat. Uh, and writes an A2, but they're kind of jazz inspired. They have a lot of cool 2 5 type patterns and uh, crossover kind of classical swing era harmony. So I really love those. So I'm going through this in order. They're not technically terribly difficult, but musically they're challenging. So you can still spend a lot of time there. It would also be great to go through the Rose Etudes or anything like that for clarinet. Um, and then after that, I may do some reading or maybe play uh, the Sax of a Kind transcription that I posted the other day, something jazz uh, inspired or do a transcription or just improvise in a harder key or play a bebop head. So that's for clarinet. For flute, I'm lucky to have this very vintage edition of the Taffanel Gobert Complete Method. Uh, you can see this. Every time I open this, little shreds of paper fall off. It's all held together by tape. Also found this, I think, at the same used bookstore that I found the Spud Murphy book. So I'm trying to go through segments of this in order. Some aren't uh, always as relevant uh, to the kind of stuff I need to work on. Um, but this is great. Uh, so with Fluid, I'll be going through that step by step too. And it's important to remember that you don't need to it's not so much about the goal as uh, the getting there. So yesterday, for example, I didn't do any of this. Uh, but the day before I did, I spent a good amount of time on uh, these method books. And then tomorrow uh, and today I'm doing the same thing. I'm really working half hour on this, half hour on that. And I highly recommend uh, that you track the times that you play, uh, especially if you're keeping track of different instruments. It's just really nice to kind of see where you've been spending your time. So I've been using the Clockify uh, app and I'll post a link down below. Um, it's great. I, my wife uses it for her work. Uh, it's great. It's a great way to track by instrument and then it adds up your time at the end of the day, what you spent on clarinet and you can associate it with a project. So that's really useful as well. And one of the other things I really like to do is, uh, this, and then maybe this will be useful. Um, I have a binder of transcriptions, but it's really a sight reading, uh, binder. So everything in this binder, I can just open up flip page through page on whatever instrument and just read. I have segments of big band charts that I've played that have been difficult or that have been emailed to me. I've just printed out uh, things from Gil Evans, things from um, Vince Giordano's Nighthawks, which was always a challenging sight reading group. Whatever material I gathered, I've printed out and just kept here just for 
practice and a lot of that is Betty Goodman solos, Edmund Hall, clarinet solos. Um, great stuff to just flip the pages like Eddie Harris says uh, in his book you can just stack up a bunch of sheet music, turn the metronome on and just read for as long as you can. And I've actually been doing that with his book. If you see uh, Scott Robinson on his YouTube channel he talked about working on this book. I don't have the cover here, I've just got it offline. Uh, this is Jazz Cliché Capers from Eddie Harris. It's about 50 or 60 pages of jazz kind of bebop melodies, um, cliches, licks, ideas, whatever you want to call them, all in this crazy stream of consciousness thing where they go through different keys. There's some of his tunes in there. There's a bunch of Ellington tunes. It's like the whole language of jazz uh, unfolding. And it's addictive. If you turn on the metronome and just start playing page by page, you could just try and read through the whole book, but it's also tiring. So I've been doing that on various instruments too. I also highly recommend uh, my friend Sam Sadigursky's Etudes book. I've been using or practicing this one connected for a long time and I'm still not there on it. Uh, but these are great when you want to get out of sort of that 19th century uh, style of writing uh, and practice something more modern but still really specific and works on specific fingering things. There's two books of these and these are great. You could also perhaps play out of box shapes, which is great for clarinet or great for flute as well. Uh, this is what I use these days. Uh, for a while I wouldn't practice out of my own book because there's, you know, too many associations with something you've made yourself. But uh, on saxophone I'll use these for warm-ups and a lot of people ha have told me that they've been using these for warm-ups as well. It's just diatonic scale patterns. I actually have uh, the first few pages of the new book finished this week. So that's something else I've been spending my time on. It's important not to uh, get yourself down uh, if you don't accomplish all these goals every day, but it's also nice to have some kind of structure. So say tomorrow you decide to just walk in the park, that's okay too. But you go back maybe the next day and you feel like practicing and you have this structure that you're adhering to. So I think it's really important that I set a few goals for myself for the summer. Um, whether I get to them or not, that's okay. It's, it's really like with anything, trying to get any kind of habit going, whether it's meditation or for me, Tai Chi as well, which is another practice that I'm involved in. Um, you know, you can't beat yourself up too much. Uh, so hopefully that advice is useful. Uh, make some plans for the summer, make some small goals. It can be a ton of stuff or it can be a little stuff. Don't overwhelm yourself, uh, but have fun, keep practicing. Thanks, bye.